Welcome to the webcast for the courtroom art competition. My name is Mona Schaefer Edwards and I am a professional courtroom artist and I'd like to tell you just a little bit about myself. I started off as a fashion illustrator working for department stores, newspapers, magazines, author of 11 books on fashion and uh, one day a long time ago I looked at the news evening news and I saw some really terrible illustrations and I realized that I could do a lot better than that. So armed with my knowledge of anatomy, clothing, body language and speed, I decided to break into the world of courtroom illustration. In my career as a courtroom artist I've covered everything from arraignments to hearings to trials, some of the trials of, of the last century, O.J. Simpson, Rodney King, and then a lot of the celebrity things, Blurred Lines, Pharrell Williams, Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan. It seems that celebrities get in trouble often and I find myself in court drawing them. So I suppose sometimes I am considered a celebrity specialist. In the 21st century, we have so much technology, we have cameras everywhere, but sometimes the camera doesn't do what an illustration can. And so when you have a witness or when you have a case that is high profile and you don't want witnesses to feel uneasy on the stand or you don't want attorneys grandstanding for the camera, that happens a lot, an illustrator a courtroom artist sitting very quietly on a bench and drawing what goes on in that courtroom is much more effective than a photograph and also an illustration conveys some sort of an essence of the of the time of the moment and of the soul of a case the criteria for whether I work or not is based on a couple of things. If a judge makes the decision that he does not want a camera in his courtroom and he basically is the, the master of the courtroom or there are defense lawyers, they don't want their clients to be photographed, they may, there may be uh, issues of witness identification, uh, there just might be a feeling that a that a judge does not want the cold eye of a camera in his courtroom. He wants to keep it more respectful, more low-key, and more, I will say, old-fashioned, which is greatly appreciated. The courtroom art competition is a component of the local, state, and national competitions for mock trial tournament. And it's open to everybody who wants to be part of the program, but maybe doesn't want to be an attorney. Maybe you love to draw, if you're good at drawing or if you just really enjoy it. This competition also gives the students an opportunity to be in the courtroom, to see how the courts are run, to see how a trial is run, and to really get the feeling of the justice system and being part of it. There is no limit to the style or medium that you want to use in order to compete in the courtroom competition. And so it, for all different people, there's all different styles. I generally use markers. I always carry a little bag with me, lots of different markers. They're uh, acetone based. So with the paper that I use, I can smear the uh, the color around and I work on a vellum pad that's 9 by 12. However, there are other artists who prefer working on toned paper and when they use toned paper they use pastels, charcoal, uh, and they do a reverse so they do line, light line on darker paper. And this is all very welcome in the competition however if you are going to use pastels, make sure that you bring fixative and you keep your paper clean and that you spray your artwork with fixative before it is delivered for judging. 
There's also colored pencils. Students love colored pencils, easy to use, thousands of different colors, and you can use many different styles combining color on top of color. And then again, there's always very simple watercolor set. You can bring in a small watercolor set and a closed bottle with water that you can use, not a big jug of water. And the watercolor is really nice, very lively color and it dries very quickly. An 11 by 14 size paper is a really good size. And a Bristol paper or a hard, heavier weight drawing, sketching paper is very good to use. First thing, most importantly, is to get a good view of the action that's going to happen. Also, one never knows whether a hearing is going to be five minutes or five hours. So it's very important to get as good a view as you can. It's really nice to sit in a corner so you get cross views in either way. If there's going to be someone who's going to be standing at a podium. Many times when I come to court and it's a hearing and there's no jury, the judge will allow me to sit in the jury box, which is really kind of cool because you get a totally different perspective of the courtroom. So I bring my bag and I find my seat, scope out where I'm going to sit and pull out. I come in very, very, it's very small. So I have all of my things in one bag. It's really disconcerting. Sometimes artists come in with these huge drawing bags and they put everything down and there's the sound of markers and it's very, very loud and very distracting. So I try and stay quiet. I work small so that many times people don't even notice I'm there. And that's what the secret is, is to do your work without disturbing anybody. And, and it's a very effective way because then people are not on their, their uh, you know, you're not on their radar that you're staring at them trying to get information. So after I sit down and I start sketching, what you do is when you sketch anybody, look for a landmark. Look for something on the face that you can start with. Start with an eyebrow. Start with the shape of the nose or a hairline. Maybe the person is in shackles and chains and you see a, a shape of a body that's very dramatic. Always go for the dramatic because you are telling a story. It's not a static photo, you know, click, click, click. You're really developing a character, developing a feeling of the story that's going to unfold. So I start with, with line and I never bring, I never bring a pencil. I never bring an eraser so that I study what I'm going to do. Take a couple beats of time, you know, 20 seconds. Take a breath, sit down, collect yourself, and then start. Start with one line, give yourself a good area, almost sort of an invisible border so that you will not go beyond a border. When a television camera is photographing the artist's work, the camera cannot pan out far enough to the borders. So it's very important when you are doing the work for the competition that you keep borders clear. So pretend that there's a television camera that's going to be shooting your work and keep all of the action within the space of the page. One thing that courtroom artists always wait for is that aha moment. The moment when something happens in that courtroom that's going to make the evening news, that's going to make people talk about what happens. So we love it when there's a witness that falls over crying, somebody passes out, um, someone makes a joke and everybody laughs, you know, kind of gallows humor sort of thing. So. For the competition, you're going to have a lot of the great scenario in front of you. So try and find some specific moment. Maybe it's a judge shaking his pen or holding up a book or some sort of uh, 
evidence. Well, that's a great thing to draw. So always find something that will help tell the story about what happens. In telling the story with an illustration, maybe even with one sketch, that one sketch should be able to convey to the television viewer or whoever is judging your artwork of what happened at that specific time in that specific courtroom. You get a feeling of motion, of something moving, of an animation of a person doing something. The judge, he is the one in this beautiful black robe sitting at his, uh, at his table there in front of the courtroom. Very important, trier of fact. Again, motion, pointing, reaching, carrying, anything that tells a story of movement in that courtroom. And here, the attorney is saying there's a killer in the courtroom and it's him. Put in as much detail as you can in the illustration. When the camera people shoot the work for television news, they're able to move the camera around, pull in tight, and pull back. So with your work in your competition, keep that in mind also, that there's lots of other things that are going on in the courtroom that you can describe. However, the most important person that you need to always have, there's a few. There is the defendant, there's the judge, there is the attorney, attorneys, and whatever else is happening. But make sure that you do have main characters in your drawing for the competition. There are many different ways to indicate a courtroom atmosphere without putting the drapes, the great seal, the state flag, the national flag, every microphone, all the wires, all the clerks and the bailiffs. You don't need that. We want to have just a feeling of a courtroom. So if you have a couple of small props, that's all you need. In this, you've got a witness and then you have the, uh, the uh, defendant or the, the person who is filing the suit. You've got a microphone, you have um, a computer, you have maybe some um, exhibits that are on the back the background, but we know and you can see, you don't have to have a thousand different things to show that this is in fact a courtroom. It always does ha help if you do have a judge in a background, just to, just to cement the atmosphere that you are in a courtroom. But if you'll see that just a microphone and a judge and then what the action is in the foreground, that's all you need to see what is going on in the courtroom. Many times a flag is a great prop. Everybody loves to have the flag. You have a witness. You have the background of an exhibit. You have someone in the foreground. You have an attorney and you have that judge who is thinking and watching the proceedings. It's a good way to tell a story, again, without filling up your paper with lots of things. One of the things that's really wonderful about this competition is to see so many different styles come out from different schools. And again, when we were going over the materials that can be used, there is such a variety of things that can be used that the students have many, many choices. And it's really a welcome thing to see lots of styles because nobody wants anyone to copy anybody else and everybody is unique. And that's what the judges of the courtroom contests look for, is something that is unique, that's not copied, that is your own work. So let's go over some of the nicer artworks that I have seen from students in the past and the different styles that they've used. So here, there looks like a combination of colored pencil and marker. And it's a really effective drawing. It's bold, tells a story, makes you feel that you're in the courtroom. You have a little indication of an American flag. It's straightforward. It's not cartoony. It's a very few little details, but it does tell the story. It gives enough breathing room around the paper. It's a really effective 
and successful illustration. Here's another illustration, slightly different style. It's not as contrast, high contrast, as the first one. It's a little bit more subdued, but it's very effective. Again, you, making use of positive and negative space. You can see that the illustration and the detail of the woodwork is really great, but it's not the entire woodwork. It's just little bits of it, and that's what you do. You give the viewer little bits of things that their own imagination can finish up. You have the judge, you have an attorney, you know, great movement. You have a nice feeling of a courtroom, nicely rendered and very clean. We look for really clean artwork too. So when you are working, make sure that you erase whatever pencil smudges, that you clean up your work and that you present something that looks professional and that you feel represents your talent. Here's artwork on a toned paper. So with the toned paper, you go from dark to light. So here the artist is building the face with using a dark pencil, building up with maybe a light pastel or a, a lighter colored pencil. So you get a nice, very rich feeling on this illustration. Again, we know that it's a courtroom. We can see there's some emotion. Well, that's emotion is always a really important thing. If someone's crying, really show them crying. If they're covering themselves and sobbing, that's always a good kind of thing to do too. So again, we've got a different style here with, with toned paper. Here is another style, very detailed, very rendered, very soft, still gives the feeling of the courtroom. You can, we know that she's wearing a black robe. It doesn't have to be black, black, black. This has different values of dark. So we do look for dark and light and contrast, but you have just as much of a story that you know that this is a judge as you do with the very, very black robe that the judge is wearing. Nice composition, nice use of space, and on the page. Here's another different style. Very fine line black pen. And then the artist is using a very light colored pencil to do the detail. But if you would look closely, there's some very nice line work here. So you've got line work, you have soft rendering, all different styles are welcome. Here we have a lot of, a lot of different styles. The artist is using pen, pencil, marker, and chalk. And it's a very lively style. This is very, very different from something that is rendered in a very tight way. This has a much more loose, more emotional feel where you've got a feeling of a background, but it's not very softly rendered. It's a little more static and it's a little more nerve wracking and exciting. With all of the really successful and exciting illustrations, there are some illustrations that come in that need a little bit of work, need a little bit of direction. And it's always really a good thing to learn from other people's work or from your own mistakes because it always gets better. And there's always room for improvement. However, we do have certain requirements that have to be followed, whether it's state, city, local, or national. And that is, again, the sizes that we had gone over and also presentation. You have to be proud of the work that, you're, that you are presenting. And to rip something out from a pad and not cutting off the edges, it just shows that you don't respect the work that you're doing. So when you respect what you're doing, it will show and it will carry on to the presentation. So clean up your edges. Don't, don't come to the competition and give your illustration looking like this. Also, one of the rules is that in courtroom illustration, 
The most important thing is you draw the people in the courtroom. How can a reporter tell a story of what's going on in the courtroom without people in the courtroom? Where are the people? We've got filing cabinets, we've got chairs, we've got desks, there's fax machines, no people. So we need people in the courtroom. And we need color in the courtroom. They do make television in color nowadays. Why should the artwork be black and white? You have a full range of color that you can use. Please use it. A story needs to be told. You need to see what's going on. However, these look like three girls talking about where they're going to go to lunch. That's not telling a story in a courtroom. Find elements in a courtroom that tell you that you're in a courtroom, not in a coffee shop. All right. So make sure that you do get some sort of feeling of animation in the courtroom, but bring in elements of that courtroom to show your viewing audience. Again, same thing. Beautifully drawn, great, great faces, except where are they? Are they at a football game? Are they in a classroom? Tell us that you're in a courtroom. Beautifully drawn, give us an idea that this is a courtroom that they are in. No black and white. Can't have black and white. We also have to have faces. When you have figures and you don't have faces, what's the point of a courtroom artist? We're not looking for portraits. We're not looking for anime or manga or cartoons. We're looking for as good a face as you can do without taking five hours to do a portrait. Remember, you don't know how much time you've got to draw the faces. You could have five minutes, you could have an hour, but get the faces in. Don't just put glasses on the judge. Let's see the judge's face. Something very important that students need to realize is that there is perspective. Now, there's perspective is a very difficult thing, but what the artist has to do is to see and to draw what they see. The way that this illustration is depicted, it makes it look like the artist is hanging from the ceiling and is drawing looking down. That's not happening. The artist is sitting in a specific spot in a courtroom. How can you make up how they're sitting if you can't see it? Draw what you see. Very important. You're the storyteller. In judging courtroom art competition, there is a list of specifics that we're looking for. There is a criteria for judging what is a winning illustration and what is not. It's very difficult to choose a first, second, and third because there are some elements in one that work and there are some that do not work. However, there is a scoring system that the judge of the courtroom art competition has to follow. And that is this, what we are looking for. The first is authenticity. How well does the sketch conform to the artistic tradition of courtroom art? In other words, do you feel as the viewer, the judger of this illustration, that that artist was in the courtroom, was depicting what was going on, does get the feeling of the illustration. The second is contrast. Is everything like a blur? There's no very uh, detailed area. There's no very open and white area. We want to have contrast, want to have light and dark. Don't want gray middle tones. We've got to have a snap of color in some place and leave the page white in others. Again, have that breathing space. Have the viewer's eye going around the illustration so that you are using the space that you're presenting to the judge as almost like a finished canvas. 
The third is figure and ground relationship. How does the artist position negative and positive elements? In some illustrations, you've got the feeling of a busy courtroom. In others, where the, the lawyers and the clients are in opening statements, you're featuring expressions. They're waiting for something. There's a body movement. There is a direction. You don't have a lot of things that are going on. The breathing space, the negative space around these characters are just as important as the positive space that where they're sitting. So make sure that, that they are placed in a spot of a grounding. Is there a desk? Is there a chair? Is there a table? Are they placed in the room with action going on within that illustration? Proportion. Sometimes I see students with a courtroom illustration and the symbol of the US or the state seal is this big and the figures are this big. You know, maybe it is that big, but remember what we're supposed to look at as the judge and as the viewer is the action that goes on in the courtroom, not the stuff that goes on in the courtroom. Maybe there's some beautifully intricately carved columns. Nobody cares. Don't put that in. Don't spend your time, because you have a limited time, don't spend that time drawing a microphone or the wires. Put your attention to the figures, to the action that's going on in the courtroom. The most important thing in this competition for you as courtroom artists is to tell the story. And if you keep in mind that you tell the story in the best straightforward way that you can, you will have a very successful illustration. Thank you for participating in this webcast. I certainly hope that you found it educational and that uh, maybe this will spur you on to wanting to be a courtroom artist yourself. Congratulations and good luck in the competitions.